K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. 800-471-3287. Game on with progressives fear us and rhinos tremble. Welcome to the political jungle. I'm JD. This is Stacy. No one is safe. No one is spared. Lock up the children. And the old folk. Welcome to the world of Liberative Conservatarian. The Guadalupe's the Grease Men. I've been following the presidential race, and uh, this Donald Trump, it reminds me of 1988. It's all cocaine and lesbian humor. <laughs> Thursday night, May 12th, 2016, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. J.D. and Stacy, game on. That's part of that conservative commandos radio network on that K98 talk. Welcome back to all our political geeks, freaks, and back alley sneaks. Hey, everybody within the sound of my voice right now. You know exactly what to do, hoopals. Get over to K98talk.org. Get in that chat room. Say hello to Stacy. Say hello to the smartest, latest up all night drinking. God knows what else they doing. It's Patel Ron to put his pants on. Oive Schmier, political radio audience in the business, baby. JD and Stacy, yo, radio guilty pleasure. <laughs> Hi. How's you? Good evening. Good evening. Pretty. Sounds like a Thursday, don't it, baby? A little bit. J.D. will take Lucifer, baby. He's been called so much worse in his life. Tonight, we welcome very special guest, Mr. Jackson Richmond, talking his DOJ slush fund piece in the Daily Caller right now. 
Ice is punk so boo boo, but runs like hip hell from Putin, baby. Nonsense of the world and more. Remember, guys, we're not just live here Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on that K98 Talk, doing some game on. We do it again Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard. Sunday morning, we're live again. I don't know how this broad talked me into that. 11 a.m. Oive Schmier, carrying your mainstream media hangover. Tomorrow, Hoople's Drive Time, 5 p.m. on the WNWN, JC, 1360 AM, 7 at Philadelphia, Southern Jersey, Northern Delaware, baby. That's right, the home of that great Carson Wentz. I can't wait to see that people play. Drive into that Yahoo Sports. Big whoop. Want to fight about it, Hoopals? After the show, not throwing it. Get over to Facebook. Find J.D. and Stacey's page. You like that, baby. You go find 10 friends. I don't care what you do with them after, but you have them like it, too. Website coming soon under construction. We bought all the domains. J-D-A-N-D-S-T-A-C-E-Y dot com dot org. All this other stuff. Very, very, very nice. Michael Loft, this flip side show side up. We're going to promo a little bit. And remember, guys, after the show, you're sticking around for the boss. That Riggy Diggy Tommy Rick Robinson with Jay Homestead taking you into the top of the 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Hour here on that K98 Talk. And then after that, hopefuls, after that, when you want to get your big J.D. and Stacy fix, you just get the needle, you start tapping on the vein, you get over to Spreaker.com, hash brown, J.D. and Stacy, J-D-A-N-D-S-T-A-C-E-Y. Find a catalog of everything I've been doing with this beautiful, smart woman, Miss Stacy Lennox, that Ricky Dicky Tommy Rick Robinson, and everywhere else we are. Good evening, baby. Good evening. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Beautiful weather here until I was out shopping and the skies opened up with you my know, window down. You know why? Why? Because God's dog hates you and took a pee on you when you left the house. Okay, wow. terrific. <laughs> nice, nice. No, I was actually leaving the store and um, realized when I went into the store, the sun was shining and there were some clouds. And by the time I was done in the store, there was a torrential thunderstorm with my window open. And then, you know, when you get in the car and it's been raining and you sit on the seat and it goes squish. Yeah. Not Ooh. good. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are we, are we, are we talking about baby seats going squish, baby? <laughs> no, we're talking about my car seat soaking wet from the rain. I think the audience got that. <laughs> well, how do you Give know yourself I'm a not, bell, not wait your Wait a second, music. baby. Wait, wait, wait. No, we're, no, we're, no, 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 no. That's a, a bell. Wait a minute. We're libertarians. How do you know I'm not really turned on by the car seat? <laughs> <laughs> No judgment. Really no need judgment. to give yourself a bell. Okay, terrific. No, that's a not a bell. It's a ding, 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 ding noise. There you go. There you go. Uh, did we just did we just cut Austin Peterson's first radio uh, presidential? Uh, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> no, nothing. No. <laughs> just gonna leave me in the corner with my dunce hat. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Tonight, guys, we got a jam-packed hour. I want to bring and welcome on to the show right now. Somebody, Stacey and I, had the opportunity to meet and spend some time with down at CPAC. That's that Mr. Jackson Richmond, baby. Jackson, I'll tell you who Jackson Richmond is. Jackson Richmond is somebody who, when I said, hey, man, send me, text me a couple short things about your bio, he must have it cut and pasted. In like four and a half seconds, I got, Jackson Richmond is currently a student at George Washington University studying that political science, baby. And during the year, host Hear the Press every Sunday on GW. GW's radio station at GWRadio.com. For those of you that went to public school, that's GWRadio.com, baby. When not entrapped in the leftist institution, he contributes to outlets such as Red Alert Politics, American Action News, and New Voices Magazine. He's currently an intern at the Daily Caller. You can follow him on them Twitters, baby, that Jackson Richmond. Mr. Richmond, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. Did you find the place a little less quiet than uh, uh, a massage The bar? middle of traffic. Good God. <laughs> Yeah, I'm inside um, the Milken Institute of Health at George Washington University. I cannot tell you how much nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> it's a leftist institution, and I don't blame you. I just, I just. You know, w w Jackson called in before the show, and uh, I was like, man, I can't wait to have him on. He's got a couple of really good pieces up in the Daily Caller right now. The one that we're going to speak about tonight I thought was absolutely fascinating. So Stacy and I are waiting, you know, doing some pre-production, and Jackson calls in. I'm like, oh, cool, here he is. And he's like, hi, how you doing? Oh, yeah. I'm ready to do a radio show. I'm in D.C. Oh, that was the two. That was the 2016 election sound effect. I, we, we use multiple sound effects for multiple things. Come on. It just reminds me of a dumpster fire. It's uh. Well, that's right. So this is the. <laughs> but being at Jackson's in, in our nation's capital, you got to add and a little bit. Probably. Of, uh... Hey, where are the white women at? Jackson. Oh, jeez. Who said that in the museum <laughs> over there, dude? What, what's going on with that institution of yours? <laughs> 
before uh before we get into it poor Jack jackson's gonna have to be in an institution before his segment is over i oh, think oh dude he's gonna get off the phone and be like i hate this place nothing works here the medications don't work i've been here for seven years so Jackson's got a couple of pieces that I've read in the last 24 hours that are up on the Daily Caller. Um, if, if you read this piece, and we didn't intro Jackson as an intern at the Daily Caller, I don't think you would have ever known. Uh, the, the writing reads as repertoire, repertoire i got to be careful, reportage, and it is, it, it's a great piece. And the title of the piece we're going to speak about tonight is Judiciary Committee Approves Bill to Eliminate DOJ Slush Fund. Yeah, what the DOJ Slush Fund, J.D. and Stacey? I'm glad you asked, Bob. Uh, from Jackson's article, the House Judiciary Committee approved the bill today to limit outside donations to the government and bureaucrats. If enacted into law, it would end the Department of Justice's slush fund for left-wing activist groups. Jackson, would you explain a little bit to the audience exactly what they're referring to by that slush fund? Because between the election and all the other buffoonery that's going on, a lot of this is really important, and I think it's lost in the sauce. Sure. So the Department of Justice over the past few years has reached agreements with big banks such as Bank of America and J.P. Morgan. And with those settlements, they would give the money to left-wing groups such as the Urban League, which would um, use it allegedly to help build communities. Allegedly. Yes. But which, not and, to donate to Democratic so the, so the, politicians so the, or anything. And they, well, they're also funding Democratic politicians. And so far, the DOJ has collected over one point five billion dollars in these settlements. I'm, I'm, and so, I'm glad. You, and so, I'm glad um, Congressman Bob Goodlot of Virginia, who is also the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, uh, introduced a bill, um, which you mentioned, to not just cut off the DOJ slush fund, but to limit how much money government and bureaucrats receive from outside groups. Jackson, uh, tell the audience before Stacey comes in, uh, give them a sense of some of the numbers that we were talking about with the fines that the DOJ racked up for the slush fund. The one that really jumped out at me, was it for the uh, the Gulf of Mexico spill? Was that the, the, the Deepwater Horizon spill? Yeah, that was just used as an example, and that's an exemption in the bill. Outside groups like British Petroleum, which was responsible for the Gulf oil spill in 2010, um, they're not subject to these rules. They had to pay the fine for the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. So BP is not um, a villain in this case, like the Urban League. Under this particular... Um, piece of legislation, those funds would have to go back into the government for the the Congress, basically, the House, to appropriate as opposed to into a DOJ fund that the DOJ can then push out to various groups. That is correct. Okay. What are some of those groups, Jackson? I mean, they, they ran like a rogues gallery and a who's who of the uh, uh, schmeckle face jerk-offs on the left. Right, so... I know one of the groups is the Urban League, and there's an extensive article on this in the Wall Street Journal from a couple years ago about the DOJ slush fund. So you plagiarized this whole article from the Wall Street Journal? No, I did not. <laughs> I linked the Wall Street Journal article. I'm just, I'm just kidding. That means, that means you can never run for vice president. No, so no, I can no, run for, so I can run can for president. Run. It means better. You can, that's Apparently right. Apparently you right. can because our current nominee is plagiarized, and now that guy's a surrogate. So no, 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 no. This goes. This I did goes, not plagiarize. I did not plagiarize. This, this goes. This goes back to 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 Uncle Joe. Biden, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It was his. It was his eighty four run. I, I could be wrong. Maybe it was his eighty eight run. But uh, you know, <laughs> that was a great cycle. You had Donna Rice sitting on Gary Hart Schmeckel. Um, <laughs> Hey, Rand Paul was accused of plagiarism a couple of years ago. Remember that? I think, well, you want to know something? Who was it that that fell, Stacey? Um, uh, I hate it when he plays a game show with me and I don't know the answer. That's all right. I'm not Alex Trebek in this one. Okay, terrific. I I, I, I have no idea what what I'm talking about either. Okay, terrific. Where's that Jeopardy music we had? (laughs) There you go. <laughs> so Jackson, in in the in the article, he goes on and and he really starts to to identify 
some of the groups that are here. And to his point, he's speaking of the Wall Street Journal article. And when I first when I first read this, I was stymied because I had always made the assumption That if the United States government, whether it was through the auspices of the DOJ or whether it was the U.S. Treasury through the IRS or whatever arm, whatever, whatever arm of the government was collecting the penalty, fine, revenue, what have you, I made an incorrect assumption that those funds flowed into the general treasury and they don't. No. When, when I'm taking a look at this, I'm looking to your point. This was Bank of America, which came to be blah, 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 blah. the Urban League receiving almost a half a billion dollars. And you have yes, one, 490 million dollars. You, 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 you have one. This is radio. This is theater of the mind. So, you know, you don't want to confuse the people from public school. We just use round numbers. So the, the um, <laughs> so they, they have this, you know, four and a half billion dollars in, in, in fines that that they take in. When you went through the Wall Street Journal's article and you did your own research, have you found any precedent in modern day American administrations for this type of of uh, uh, slush funds? The only one that I can think of, and I don't know of any nefarious use, doesn't the um, whether it's the Department of the Interior or the one that, the department that's in charge of all the federal buildings. Well, one fund that I was thinking of was uh, Acorn, which was exposed by underground guerrilla activist James Mm O'Keefe. And the government benefited very much from Acorn. Now Acorn is defunct. Um, But I don't think it just is slush funds. That's the problem. I think it's cronyism in general, which we see under this administration. We see it in the IRS, in the case of Lois Lerner and John Koskinen targeting right wing groups. I mean, we just see it all over this administration, which prides itself on being transparent when in actuality it's anything but. But of course, Jackson, being good conservatives like we are, or even libertarians, um, we would say it wouldn't matter who's in the White House, that that type of cronyism shouldn't go the other way either. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we want to... We want to stop government in general from creating winners and losers, which is exactly what this slush from the f- slush fund. Wow. Sorry about that program was doing. Yeah, it's just like uh, subsidies for farmers. Ted Cruz said exactly what you said just now, Stacey, that the government picks winners and losers. Now, where well, they've you... been doing it for a long time. <laughs> yep. No, when would the... no, no, they have. When the hell was the last time the government picked? The last time the government picked the winner, Obama had his finger jammed up his nose. All the government picks are losers after losers after losers. Solyndra and then and then and then and then and then. Yes. Harp. Stacey was making a phenomenal. Fannie point. Mae, Freddie Mac. Exactly. I, they, they, I love them on the OMTV raps, both of them, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. They, they were fly and fresh. Oh, young. God. The- <laughs> He's too young to even know what you're talking about. Fann- Fannie, Fre- and- Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac on MTV raps. Hold on. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm doing the running man, son. <laughs> okay, terrific. <clears throat> Jackson, we got about two minutes left in the segment before uh, before we go out to break. Let me ask you a question. I know that the – now, is it was it just that, that uh, Goodlatte is the chairman on the committee, so that's why he, he features in the art article? Is he one of the sponsors of the legislation? What are the – what's the prognosis for this as well? Um. Well, yesterday it passed in the House Judiciary Committee, which Congressman Goodlatte chairs, by a vote of 18 to 6. And um, he, he is the one who sponsored. There are a couple co-sponsors. Um, I can't think of them off the top of my head, but Goodlatte is the primary sponsor of this bill. And I'm glad that Congressman Goodlatte is finally stepping up to the plate to address what hopefully will be taking down cronyism in the government, which is long overdue, my friend. Do you know if in that 18 to 6 there was any Democrat crossover? Um, not to my knowledge. Just say I don't know. Oh, my God. 
God, just say I don't I know. Don't okay, know. Mr. Public School Kid, fine. This is, su- this, is ju- this is such a great article. I love to just say I don't know. Not to my knowledge. Who are you, Hillary Clinton's illegitimate love child, for God's sake? You got your <laughs> servant. Stop it. Servant in, Stop the, in, it. in, the, in the bus that you went over there? All right, kids. You be gonna... nice to Jackson. I definitely will. And as a matter of fact, speaking about being nice to Jackson, Jackson, uh, how, how much longer are you going to be having pieces put up uh, in the Daily Caller? As long as I'm there and I'm there until May 31st. All right, everybody get over to that dailycaller.com, baby. You're going to find yourself from Jackson Richmond. For those of you on the Twitters, you go find him at Jackson Richmond. No hyphen, no underscores. Like Linda Richmond. Okay, everybody discuss. Coffee talk. Eh. Uh, Barbara Streisand. We we want to thank you very, very much for joining the program. We want everybody to get out there. Follow him over on Facebook. If he's over there, you follow him on chat. Hey, if you see him on the Tinders, be careful. He's a young man. If you see him on the Twitter, you, it depends on how old, whether you got a right swipe or left swipe or whatever. I want everybody I want everybody to, uh, to follow Mr. Jackson Richmond and please follow. He's going to be around, I think this is somebody, well, in the next 5, 10, 15 years, as Stacy and I grow, as the show grows, I think we're going to be hearing a hell of a lot more from Jackson Richmond, and I only see bigger and brighter things in your future. Jackson, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. No worries. All right, kids. That was fun, huh, Stacey? I like that kid. I know you like that kid. I like that kid. I see. I see absolutely none of myself in him, and that's why I have such hope for him. Because he's 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 not, he's he's smart. You'd be okay he's, if he was dating your niece or something like that. Yeah. Well, she's three, so no, that would be weird. <laughs> but yes, well, if if you had a niece of a pre- <laughs> if a nice young man like that dated your niece, you'd be okay. He's a man. If you, a so- guy like you dated your niece, you'd kill him. Jackson, if you're still listening, boy chick, you're welcome to come over and you can meet anyone in the family you want. You can date oh, them from sure. 18 to 80. Blind, crippled, and crazy. Jenny and Stacy got to pay a couple of bills. Got game on here, part of that conservative commandos radio network on that K98 talk. Enjoy this tomorrow. Hoobles in that 1360 WNJC. Game on. The show's so big. Even Diamond Dave's taking us out to break. We'll be right back. One break coming up. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. You'll be able to keep your health care plan. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? But you've got a business. You didn't build that. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, my, I felt this thrill going up my leg. I well, mean, I don't have that too often. Steady. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. Ricky Robinson, host of America Off the Rails, will tackle the important issues facing America today as he tries to keep America from coming off the track. Get ready to hear the truth every Monday through Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, here on K98talk.com and the Spark Radio Network. Are you conservative in a world of liberal? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, you're not alone. Hey, I'm Daniel Stafford, host of The Stafford Voice, and I'd like to invite you to tune in each Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, where I'll break down the events of the week, and together we'll learn about how they affect you. So sit back and get ready for the good, the bad, and the ugly of talk radio right here on K98 Talk.
From the no- Vikings of Norway to my home down south to Washington, D.C., I've been around. I've seen it all, and I've come out on top. You better beware, for all you know, the bell tolls for you. Enter the bell tower or watch your step. 8 p.m. Thursdays, K98 Talk. Welcome back, truckers, suckers, and bad. J.D. and Stacy, K98 Talk here. Game on, part of that Conservative Commandos Radio Network. Hoopals, hoopals, hoopals. Hey, everybody, within the sound of my voice, you know exactly what to do right now. Get over to K98Talk.org. Get in that chat room. Say hello to Stacy. Join the conversation. Ron, pants on. Oy vey, schmear. Remember, guys, we're not just live here at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on K98 for Game On. We do it again Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard. Sunday morning, 11 a.m., we are live for that Game On again. Here in your mainstream media hangover. Tomorrow, hoopals, drive time, 5 p.m. That WNJC 1360 AM serving Philadelphia, Southern Jersey, Northern Delaware with that drive time leading to that Yahoo Sports during the show. You can get over to Facebook, find JD and Stacy's page, like it, find 10 friends, have them like it too. Website coming soon. Check out the Michael Loftus site. What is that? The Loftus Party Stacy? It's the Loftus Party and another friend of the show. The Loftus Party.com. Oh. Very good friend of the show, baby. And then No, 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 no. Another good friend of the show, the gentleman who does our bumper music, Alfonso Rachel and 20 Pound Sledge. Um, is actually the house band for the flip side now. So um, they're getting a little bigger and coming together. And for those of you who don't know Zoe, he's like uh, the guy from The Roots without the afro. <laughs> the oh, after stop the, it. <laughs> remember the guy after the show. <laughs> Okay, terrific. Stick around for that boss, that Ricky Tiki Tommy Rick Robinson, taking you to the top of the 11 o'clock hour on that America off the rails. Now, after that, you get it on speaker.com. Hashtag JD and Stacey, J D A N D S T A C E Y. Find out everything we've been doing here, and you just listen to all that and drink and do your drugs all to the morning light. And then, oh my God, you got to feed the animals, take care of the kids. <laughs> That um, that Jackson kid, man. Uh, you know, between he was he's been at the Weekly Standard, National Review. He's been on the set with them at Special Report. <laughs> he's writing in the Daily Caller. I mean, and he's what? He's eleven. <laughs> you know, maybe he's he's twenty one. But I, I thought that's a great piece. And that, I, I will tell you the truth: the way that the DOJ has uh, uh, used that slush fund has just absolutely made me ill. It really has. Yeah, you know? but and, and it makes us more ill, of course, being who we are with the beliefs that we hold because it's gone to these, you know, leftist propagandist type organizations. You know, I don't know that it would make me any less ill if it was, you know, supporting right wing support it, it, it organizations. Does, it, does, it doesn't have to, though, because be, be, because there's no government slush fund for for groups like that on the right. It, they are they are organically, you know, for Nancy Pelosi, you know, <laughs> with a pulled in face, you're looking like a stupid puppet, uh, you know, speaking about AstroTurf, AstroTurf, AstroTurf. You know, it's the right that really is organic and it's the right that has to raise money from people who believe in the cause because the right is never going to turn around and have the federal government give them, uh, you know, half a nickel for anything. And if they do and there's a Democrat in the White House, it's the biggest story in the world and they can't have it. And this is why we can't have nice things. Speaking about why we can't have nice things. We have avoided these 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 mud hut savages for a while, but it doesn't mean that they've gone away. It's just that all of us, all 330 million of us, are living myopically like Americans in the middle of this joke of a what do you call this? The, the, the dumpster fire. The dumpster fire. <laughs> the presidential election, but listen, don't... Oh, derka, derka, derka. Don't sleep on them, because you want to know why? Uh, why do the darker darkers blow everything up, J.D. and Stacey? Ask Scott so, Bob. Virgin. Okay. That's, un- our, that's our ISIS primer. Yes, it, it, it's unfortunate that... You know what, Stacey, one of the things that I found interesting since we've been doing this show, you know, there, there's always domestic events and Stories that take precedent and, you know, we'll run with it. We had, you know, a few months going through the primary, but we are always coming back to ISIS. And I feel that every time we come back to ISIS, we come back. Forget about what what a a boo-boo says, this schmeckle face jerk off in, in 1600. You know, every time we come back to this story, they seem to me to be stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And 
One of the reasons I, I wanted to do this segment today, and what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about two separate cities and two separate countries, both right now controlled by ISIS. We're going to talk about what's going on in the city of Mosul in Iraq, which has been uh, overtaken and under ISIS control for two years since 2014. Uh, and we're going to talk about Raqqa over in Syria. And what really. Well, and, and Mosul being particularly emotional for those of us in the U.S., because that was one of the places where the remaining troops have built bridges and, and done some good work in securing that for the Iraqi government. And we lost a lot of guys there. And we didn't and we didn't have to lose what was gained there. And, and again, the, you know, this administration, honestly, and, and if, if you ever wanted to know whether or not Barack Obama was or is serious about Islam, radical Islamic terrorism, he's not. And his DNI, his director of national intelligence, James Clapper, said as much the other day. This is from The Hill. Uh, Clapper doubts Mosul can be retaken from ISIS this year. And what jumped out at me is that on Wednesday, Clapper said that he doesn't see Iraqi forces, which are actually being trained and led by the top, by the U.S., retaking Mosul from the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria during the Obama administration. He says they've lost a lot of territory, he tells the Washington Post, and we're killing a lot of their fighters, that, 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 that. But this is going to be really, really long and messy. If you doubt... You know, one of, one of the favorite friends of the show that we have on is Mr. Joseph Levine, who's a, who's a great guest that we have on International Affairs over from Israel. And one of the things that he perpetually makes the point about is that this country's enemies, whether they be in the Middle East, whether they be in the European theater, whether they be in North Africa, wherever they are on the face of the map, they take their cues of the strength of this nation and this nation's resolve to push back and actually do something for its national interest based on the actions of the president. And you can like that and you can not like that. And that has a lot of, of, of application to what's going on right now with the people who are running. But, you know, you've had Obama who's basically refused to do anything. So if, if you take yourself out of your, your U.S. Oh. Hold on, hold on. If you take yourself out of your U.S. domestic mindset and you think about this for a second, if you look at it logistically, yes, it's a 75-mile front in Mosul. But it is an Iraqi city that is being held captive by several thousand fighters. And for two years, two years, the Iraqi National Army hasn't been able to do anything about it. Now, if you're an, an, an enemy of this country looking at this, you know that if the U.S. had the will, they could retake it, with a lot of losses, but they could retake it. But we're not even doing that, Stacey. No, and, and I think, you know, the other thing, we have talked to our good friend Joseph um, about this is it's not that Obama has done nothing. It's that he's done worse than nothing. And he has actually signaled within the Arab and the Islamic world that we don't fight back when you think about Iran capturing our boat, the footage that was taken from there. You know, we were told by Joseph, you will lose face as a result of that. And we have continued to lose face. And, you know, even today is within the last 24 hours, you know, the Iraqi military was successful in taking back Ramadi, but, you know, car blast kills 17 right outside the city gates. You know, they've gone guerrilla where the, where, where the Iraqi military has pushed them back. ISIS has gone to guerrilla warfare and the Iraqi military has no idea how to handle it. No, none at all. And, and to your point about guerrilla warfare, when you when you read the eyewitness accounts of some of the people that have come out of uh, out of Mosul uh, and these reports are within the last month or so it, it, to your point about guerrilla warfare, this smacks of, of hit and run tactics that really hit the U.S. and hurt us badly in Vietnam. And it's not that the United States does not have... This is what worries me and bothers me about what's going on. Because this is a lot more complicated than the U.S. telling a bunch of uh, uh, mud hut ass with rock wiping durka durka savages how to fight. It is. It, 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 it's a lot more complicated than that. So you, for two years, they've been trying to retake Mosul. For a few days last month, this is from The Guardian, for a few days last month, the offensive looked like it already might be underway. But that soon changed when the Iraqis, trained by U.S. forces, were quickly ousted from Al Nasr, the first town they had seized. When you hear the press telling you that they, ISIS occupies the city of Mosul, in between Mosul and where the most friendly forces are, let me read this, there were about 25 more small towns and villages all occupied by ISIS between them and Mosul 
and 60 miles to go. The Kurds began this fight about two years ago, the, the, the Peshmerga forces. And what I don't understand for the life of me, why the U.S. will let its military forces get caught up in whatever kind of tribal garbage that is going on over in Iraq. The Kurds and the Peshmerga forces who come down from the northern part of Iraq, who consider themselves ethnically different and a sovereign nation, they're one of the toughest rebel fighters in, in, in that region mm -hmm. that are nominally on the side of the U.S. They had such quick, swift success in 2014 in pushing back ISIS. Then what happened is they were combined with the Iraqi National Army. The country, and this is still in the, in the Guardian, the country remains crippled by ethnic and sectarian strife and political torpor, which have withered state control and pitched the Iraqi army in a power struggle with militias against the Kurds. And then it goes on. <coughs> you have the Iraqis are in complete disarray. Mosul is home to six. 100,000 people, Stacey, and for some reason the United States is allowing itself to be the face of an effort that is going to let them be slaughtered by a bunch of basically glorified organized crime street thugs. Well, and it, it's not just that. You know, you bring up the Kurds. The Iraqi forces and the Kurds don't view each other. They view each other and allies as, as allied against ISIS, but the Kurds view themselves as much more um, principled and dedicated to the cause of ridding their region of ISIS than the Iraqi military. They watch the they watch the Iraqi military run out of Mosul like a bunch of little girls. I mean, literally, just ran out of the city in 2014. See ya, we ain't doing this. And so if, we've invested a boatload of money into training the Iraqi military when what we probably should have done was arm the Kurds. <laughs> and if you want to know, if you want to know, if you want to know what is going on inside of Mosul, here are two eyewitness reports from two men in their early 20s within the last 30 days. Out of the crowd emerged two young men in their early 20s. Quote, I tell you what is what it is like in there, said one 22-year-old who had walked to uh, Mokmore, which is the safe zone from near Mosul. It is so confused. My father is in ISIS. He joined them because he has three wives and could not afford to pay for them all. Tell me about it, baby. The man said, adding that his father had joined the terror group to benefit from the stipend it pays its members. It was financial for him, but it made our life hell. A second man, Isam, 22, said his brother had joined the terror group and had tried to recruit him. I said no, and he did not force me, but he became ideological. Communities are very tired. They are ruthless. If they catch you smoking once, they will warn you, he said, inhaling a cigarette. If they catch you a second, Second time, you get the leather, he added, lifting his shirt to show faint scars. That segues over into the city of But Raqqa. I mean, that brings, but oh, wait, wait. I was going to say, that brings up a point that we tend to forget about ISIS and Sharia law. It is not just the behavior code and the penal code. It is the stipend. It is oh, the things dirka, dirka, that dirka. they provide for their members. They take full and complete care of them. This model, the fact that we can't fight against it makes me sick because this model was started by Nasser Arafat and the PLO back in the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. in the Palestinian territories. And everybody, whether it's Hamas or Islamic Jihad, whoever it is in that region, has fed off that and expanded that you take care of the people and at the end of the day, for bread, rice, and a couple of shekels, they'll come and cut people's heads off. To that point, you just heard what was going on inside of Mosul. We only have about two and three minutes left, but now I want to switch to the Syrian city of Raqqa. Raqqa is also under ISIS control. This is from the IBC Times. ISIS extremists execute seven-year-olds for swearing as he played football with friends in Raqqa. I want you to keep in mind that if you actually backtrack this president's foreign policy, these are people he thinks that can be reasoned with. Brutal ISIS militants executed a seven-year-old boy firing squad, by firing squad after he was heard swearing while playing a game of football with his friends. The boy named locally as Muaz Hassan was playing on Monday, uh, May 2nd, in ISIS's de facto capital of Raqqa when a militant walked past and said he heard of him swearing. Stacey, we have about two or three minutes left. What I find to be two glaring differences between Mosul and Raqqa both of those are being led by U.S., not forces, but by U.S. command, basically in the rear, but at the top of the planning. Oh, oh, at the oh, top, oh, well, hold on a second. At the top of the planning. However, ISIS in Raqqa, with the, the, the siege that's underway now to retake the city, 
has declared a state of emergency. And what I found, why is it such a glaring difference? U.S. trained, they're both using local forces. It's because the Russians are involved in the... the, the say. Exactly. The Russians are involved in the push against Raqqa in Syria. Folks, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about how scary it is that ISIS, holding two separate cities in two separate countries in the Middle East, one of them they're sitting there laughing and have had it for two years. The other one they're sitting there and they're scared as hell. And it's not because of the United States. It's because of the Russians. Well, and that was the other thing we talked about earlier this week. Those Middle Eastern Eastern leaders, even our allies, to include Benjamin Netanyahu, are taking meetings with Putin because your reputation, if you will, precedes you in many of those cultures and the reputation of our country and our leader at this point. We have not saved face. Vladimir Putin has. Da, but it is okay. And let me tell you why. The orange man has had beauty oh, contests in my country. So I know that I'm going to get laid when he's president. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to have to learn the Russian alphabet. <laughs> you must listen. Cheeto man is going to be easy for me. F that noise, baby. It's still American. It's still JD and Stacy here on Game On, part of that Conservative Commandos Radio Network. K98 Talk. Fastest hour in conservative radio is coming in to its last segment, taking you to the top of the 10 o'clock hour. Stick around, kids. Going to pay some bills. JD and Stacy coming right back. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Jason, host of According to Me. I'd like to invite you to check out my show. It's a two-hour show that lasts 60 minutes in... Uh, listen, I hate to interrupt, but uh, one thing I can do is read off a script. Just say, uh, let me be clear a lot. It works. President Obama, I, I, I can handle this. It's a radio promo. I, I'm not green. I've done this before. Did someone say green? Now, Al Gore is here. Listen, I'm just trying to record a radio promo. Do you mind? Now, uh, do you say good things about me on the show? <laughs> no, not at all. But if it makes you feel any better, I rip on Republicans just as much. The AM radio frequencies give off very high levels of radiation. Look, my show is on the internet, which you invented. I mean, can, I, can I just do my promo? I got a pen. I can veto that, you know. I know you got a pen. It's not a law. It's a radio promo. Listen, listen, just listen to my show. Barack Obama and Al Gore hate it, so you're going to love it. Here's an executive order. Don't listen to a show. He doesn't like me. He's racist. And he doesn't recycle either. That's it. I'm done. It's According to Me, Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on K98 Talk. Wondering why you're up early with us on a Sunday morning making a cocktail? News lately got you drinking? Hung over from the mainstream media by Sunday? We are, and we got you covered. We sure do. We got your hangover cure for those weekly news blues. So sit back, top off your mimosa, and add some Baileys to that coffee. Take a match to your copy of the New York Times. Light, funny, and oh yeah, news with booze. And a lot of laughter. Welcome to Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. If it's Sunday, it's Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. We're your cure from your weekly news hangover. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost, for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget. Web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at K98FM.com. 
Sportsnet.com. What's going on there, J.D. and Stacey? You guys were talking, and then people were trying to sell me products and talk about shows. It's called commercials, Bob. Welcome back. Political geeks, freaks, back alley sneaks, J.D. and Stacey. Game on, part of that conservative commandos radio network here on that K98 talk. Got about 15 minutes left, and we take you through the top of the 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Hours to everybody right now. Get over to K98talk.org. Leave your pants at the door, baby. Hop in that crazy dream pool over there. Say hello to Ron. His pants are off, too. Nobody cares anymore, Oy Vesh, man. Remember, guys, not just Tuesday, Thursday. Sunday 9, Sunday 11, Friday 5 p.m. That's on the AM radio in Philly. Ah, we got stuff on Facebook. Michael Loftus is a big friend. We all hug each other and run around. We got stuff on Spreaker. Wah, wah. <laughs> what? What? I don't know. The, th- the third segment back in is always like, ah, okay, we do this. And <laughs> well, I haven't okay, met Michael in terrific. person, so apparently. Apparently, it's just you that hugs him and runs around. No, no, no. Zoe, no, Zoe is there with us, too. Zoe is there with us, too. In that little courtyard okay. behind, the com- behind the comedy and magic club, where everybody goes to smoke cigarettes. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. It's L.A., so, like, after the show, we all got out there and we smoked uh, cigarettes. And <laughs> we all decided to... You're really not supposed to tell lies on our friends like that. No, but then we all laughed and had much big fun. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, Trumpkins. Hey, you thought I forgot about you, didn't you, you idiots? Yeah, you're all on the Trump tank. Take an acid. <laughs> Listen up, Trumpkins. Hand off Schmeckle, ear on radio. Hand off Schmeckle, ear on radio. Stacey, do you know what I did not know until uh, today when we were getting ready for the show and finding things for segment three? No, I don't know what you did not know. I just know that I normally read segment three while I'm eating my dinner. And when I got to the last line of this one, I wanted to be sick. (laughs) I made some nice cheeseburgers, some rosemary potatoes, had a little corn on the cob, reading the article. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) I got to be careful. My kids look at me like, what, mom? Oh, God, just no. I, we've, I've got to keep the gig on 1360 WNJC because, man, if I lose that, it's going to be back to... How would you like to mow my lawn? Huh? <laughs> so, Stacy and I, you'll always hear us speak about, and especially in segment three, the nonsense of the world segment, that's really where the radio gods shine. I mean, when you just find this stupid, uh, 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 asinine stuff that her and I find for this third segment, and it really is just the great gene pool... We speak of the radio gods. Stacy, you know what I didn't know? I did not know that the radio god's name evidently is Vishnu. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, Trump, just listen up. Hand up, Michael, ear on radio. Little Donnie, little Donnie, little Donnie, little Donnie must have been going to church with that Bible. This is from the AP, Divine Intervention. Indian Hindus ask the gods to help Trump. That's right, folks. Indians. For those of you who went to public school, well, right wing Indian Hindus. Right, uh, okay, but the, the, the public school folks, we got to let them know this is call centers, not casinos. So, ba, 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 <laughs> activists of right wing Hindocino or Hindu army. Hold on, I'll find it and do it to myself. Hindocino, <laughs> what? Hold on. Hindocino. Hindocino. Hindu Sina? I, it was like a cross between Hindu and Casino. It was Hindu, pretty epic. Hindus, no, it's in the article. Hindus, the Hindu army. I really should read these before we go on. So this is from New Delhi. And no, Bob, that's not where you get turkey sandwiches. Donald Trump may find it tough to get Republican leaders behind his campaign, but he's got some faraway fans trying to get the gods on his side. God, I, I couldn't have made this up. Around a dozen members of a right-wing Indian Hindu group. Please tell me they have turbans and swords. Please tell me they have turbans and swords. Just because I'm so sick, tell me they have turbans and swords. To help Trump win the U.S. presidential election. While Trump has dominated the Republican primary race to decide the party's candidates in November elections, the whole world is screaming against Islamic terrorism. Stacey, I cannot. Was there a specific God they were praying to here? 
No, but this is from Vishnu Gupta, founder of the <laughs> Hindu Sena Nationalist Group. Oh my God, there's nationalists in India. Quote, but, but, only Donald Trump can save humanity. But the best thing about this entire article at the top is a picture with a Hindu altar made with Donald Trump's picture in the middle, and he has a big red dot in his forehead. Okay, terrific. Do not be telling me, my friend. Do not, do not, no, 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 Miss Daisy, Miss Radio Lady. Miss Radio Lady, come and talk about me and my country. Or do you know so much, Miss Radio Lady? Or no, you don't say about the Donald Trump. Or you don't like the Donald Trump. How would you like to be living here in the New Delhi on the Kashmir with all the crazy Muslims that come after us? Have you ever asked yourself that question? No. All you do is you come in and you ask us for chips and your Gatorade and your thank you, thank you, come again. <laughs> Donald Trump has a red dot. On his oh, forehead. God in heaven. <laughs> we are going to get run out of Philadelphia by some Hindu temple, I swear to oh, God. Oh, God. This is going on the radio tomorrow. It just, it's just added to the seven or eight states that don't listen to us anymore. Do not be telling me about Donald Trump, my friend, okay? I come here every time. I have I have turban with the American flag on it, okay? I have I was make 7 11 uh, no, 7 No, it's not an again. American flag. Hey, you know what? I was make 7 11 7 12 again way before the Donald Trump. The Nationalist turbans are white. You know what else is white? The, 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 <laughs> the, the, oh, this is why I come to this country, my friend. For the... Hey, where are the white women at? You know, I heard no, the my... sheets. <laughs> with the American nationalists. <laughs> God, get me out of this story. That made me want to lose my dinner. <laughs> Can we do a whole show on this story next week? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, this one. Let's was, go to uh, Mother's Day. That, that, Supposedly, that, that, Lou and Doc had some emotional thing. We've got, we've got the trailer trash. We have a heartwarming Mother's Day story <laughs> straight out of the trailer park that reminds me of. <laughs> this is from the smokinggun.com, so you know this has got to be some white trash nonsense. Wife batted husband over candy and flowers. Incense that her husband got her, that's a big word for the smokinggun.com crowd. Incense that her husband it got is. her the wrong flowers and candy for Mother's Day. A Florida woman alle- allegedly pummeled her spouse, according to cops, who arrested her for domestic battery. Investigators allege that Virginia Stewart, 42, attacked her spouse during an argument on Mother's Day in their family Holmes Beach residence. C- could you imagine this? Ah, uh, hi, honey. You know... You, you, you don't care. Happy, happy Mother's Day, baby. And it's just no, like, she threw cups around the room and broke them. She punched him several times while also striking him in the head with a coat hanger. I, is this My favorite stage? part of this story, though, is that Stewart is scheduled for a June 9th arraignment on a misdemeanor charge. A judicial order bars her from having any contact with her husband until further court order. Oh, that's great. Since she's already been to court, it's got to be all. Wait, is this, but, is this freaking I mean, here's my this? thing. Maybe I'm bizarre. I don't expect, you know, my spouse to get me a Mother's Day present. I'm not his mother. I expect him to get his mother one. I expect him to facilitate the ch- children recognizing it until they're of a certain age. But... You can't get me the wrong flowers and candy. I just don't get this story at all. She's crazy. Oh, yeah, let me tell you something. <laughs> They're all crazy. They're all sisters. Oh, and you want to know what? It must be a day that ends in Y. You know why? Robot. <laughs> From, of all places, Bloomberg, Huey prepares for robot overlords and communications with the dead. This has... Now, this story I had heard of. World where people live forever, dead relatives linger on in computers, and robots try to kill us. This sounds like the Terminator. Oh, my God. So does that mean... So technically... So explain exactly what they're doing uploading the memories with this. You know, <clears throat> uploading memories, I, I don't know that I really understood that, but they're basically preparing for a post-human society, and Google's, <laughs> like, high-tech companies are discussing long-term plans for this, um, where they are, like, talking about how they're going to cope when an AI persona can basically absorb ideas from books and everywhere else, like that dumb AI bot from Microsoft did so well on Twitter, 
and take over the world. Basically, the gist of this is when everybody dies, they're going to be able to upload grandma and grandpa's memories into some great cloud system in the sky, and it'll be, you know, so, so you'll have their experience. So, you know those questions you never got to ask the people who have passed on? So, supposedly... For the next 20 years, all your dead relatives are going to be stored on a hard drive in your computer or up, where, up there in the cloud for you to go back and go, Grandma, uh, I'm closing on a house today. Uh, do I want to put down more than 20%? And they go in there and Grandma comes back from the great beyond through your Mac and goes, da, 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 da. Now, here's my question. Here's my question. With technology watching that and all of the cameras, if you get in like kind of, kind of, kind of all lovey dovey with your baby and your computer's open and that camera's looking at your baby, can grandma see you from the great beyond with your baby now? Oh, I don't. You know, <laughs> here, okay. You know how I've told you no midgets on the show? Yeah. You are getting a temporary ban on robots. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I better, I better, I better enjoy this while I can. All right, kids, the robots haven't taken over the world just yet, so that means two humans have just wrapped up the fastest hour in conservative radio. We want to thank everybody for joining us, old listeners, new listeners, everybody in between 18 to 80, blind, crippled, and crazy, baby. J.D. and Stacey, yo, radio acid drip. This, for new listeners, is the time of the show that I look at my brilliant and beautiful co-host, and I say, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl. You got them keys? Oh, I got those keys. Let's get out of here. Why don't you tell the nice people where they can find you? No midget robot speaker. You can always find me on Twitter at Matt Scott Fire, S C O T S F Y R E, and on Facebook at Stacey Lennox. And you can find me at Game on JD on the Twitters, though I don't think I'll be around for the next few hours because I'm hot to the I'm heading to the robot midget store. After that, Boston's alleyway, city situations. Got my bulletproof vest on. Somebody will take a shot. If I live through it, I'll see you Sunday. I'm looking for you, you Occupy freaks, with your glitter bombs. Bring it on! Bring on the glitter. Everything has changed. Everything has changed in the last few years. Conservatives used to take it, and we're not taking it anymore. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street Casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your... to 29security.com That's the number 29security.com 29security.com Go to 29security.com If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street Casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works.